Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for the uh, invitation. I would like to uh, present the refinery framework, uh, which is a, a tool uh, for generating uh, consistent models on the cloud. So I need to move something a bit. Now I'm, I'm perfectly ready. So uh, our approach aims to generate uh, graph-based models. Graph-based models are widely used in software engineering. They can represent uh, system designs used in model-based engineering. Uh, they can uh, uh, the, uh, show the composition of pointers and objects in data structures or the content of databases. Similarly, uh, and uh, they can uh, specify complex uh, test scenarios which are necessary for uh, uh, test generating test cases for autonomous vehicles such as self-driving car. Similarly, most testing, benchmarking and design space exploration uh, scenarios uh, rely on the construction of graph models which can pose a significant challenge. Therefore, to support the aforementioned techniques, we focus our research on the direct and automated generation of graph, of graph models, which are either consistent, realistic, diverse, or scalable. To illustrate our technique, we will use a, a simplified file system uh, graph uh, structure, uh, uh, where we use a simple, the file system of a simple Git repository. So typically, the, those models are specified by a meta model, which define the main concepts and uh, relations of the model. For example, in a file system, you can have files, and some of the files can be directories, which can have uh, children are, are as uh, further files, and potentially you can have symbolic, sim symbolic links, which can refer to other files. So for example, in a uh, Git repository, you can have a, a, a file system, a simple file system, which has uh, multiple directories in it and which contains source file, test files, resources, and the symbolic links. So, how we imagine the uh, an ideal graph generator? So, as an input, a graph generator gets uh, the specification of the problem which is the meta model, some constraints, some size requirements, and uh, somehow we did some ways to describe the realistic nature of the models. For example, we get some parameters and we push a button and it will start to generate a sequence of consistent models which can be used for our uh, in our domain. Additionally, if the model is inconsistent, then uh, the model generation can show that there is no such model or there are no more models. So we can show that the generation is complete. So how we can how are we how we generate models? Let's let's look inside the uh, the graph generation technique. So uh, the input of the model generation is the domain specification, which describes only the most basic structures, uh, only the basic structures of the model. And here the most details are unknown. On the other hand, the output of the model generation uh, is a concrete graph uh, where everything is fully specified. In our approach, we use partial models as an intermediate state for model generation. A uh, partial model explicitly represent uh, uncertainty, and it can represent both the known and the unknown parts of the models. And how we generate models? Model generation uh, is an exploratory exploration process, which starts from the specification and uh, uh, gradually reduces the uncertainty until it reaches a until we reach concrete models therefore we can explore the models so how we represent those abstract partial models uh, we use four value logic to uh, 
to represent graphs. Normally, in a, in a concrete graph, everything is either true or false. So, for example, we can say that there is a, a, a symbolic link here, and this is true, and it is false that there is another symbolic link. Uh, beside true and false, we introduce the unknown answer, the unknown logic value to uh, denote uncertain preferences. Uh, for example, if I if we haven't decided that this link points to this file or the this image file or the main file, then we can represent using uh, an unknown value to to denote that. And any combination of the uh, of the potential uh, concrete edges is, is valid. Additionally, we can uh, introduce uncertain types, which means that we haven't decided this main uh, uh, file is a directory or not, and we can denote this. We can either decide that, uh, whether it will be a, a directory or not. And just to make it complete, we added the, the error value, which represent uh, inconsistencies in the model in an explicit way. So if there is a target edge and the forbid uh, loop uh, symbolic links, then this will be an inconsistency in the model. Additionally, we extended this uncertainty to the existence of nodes and the equivalence between the nodes. And this allows us to uh, either make nodes disappear from the partial specification, or with an uncertain equivalence, we can make we can split existing nodes into multiple nodes. And this allows us to, to grow the graph. So uh, there will be a quick demo <laughs> from me as well, where I will show that this uh, uncertainty, this four-byte logic with ex existent equals is sufficient to describe type systems. And we will use this to, to grow graphs. And what is a refinement? A refinement here uh, reduces the uncertainty in a way that uh, we will eventually create uh, concrete models. So normally, we have the false and the true values. And uh, an unknown value is represent both options. So an unknown can be either false or true. And an inconsistency is both true and false. And we try to refine our partial models automatically. If there is still uncertainty in the model, we can say that it's incomplete and uh, we need to go forward in an automated process to, to, uh, to refine the models. If we are, have uh, either false or true values, or all values are either true, true or false, then that's a concrete model. And if we went a bit too far, we, we can see inconsistencies in the models and we are forced to turn back. Uh, I may skip this part and go directly to the demo because it's uh, more more visible. But we can specify constraints as uh, graph predicates, and the uncertainty of this uh, of the model is extended to the graph predicates as well. And we can evaluate graph predicates in uncertain models. Therefore, we can introduce uh, well-formed constraints as error patterns, like uh, like OCL constraints or Viator patterns. So we have a, a partial model uh, where there is a lot of uncertainty, and we want to get concrete models for testing, benchmarking, or other purposes. We start from the partial model. We automatically apply uh, in, in the refinery tool, we automatically apply uh, refinement operations until we get a solution, which is a concrete model. The search is parameterized by uh, the number of different solutions, so how many 
uh, graphs we want to see, what kind of difference we want to see between the graphs. Uh, we can see, set the random seed. And additionally, we can set the size of the model we want to see. We will see this in the, in the demo. And uh, I encourage everybody to go to this link and I will I will uh, continue with the with the short demo. And that's might not be interesting. So if you go to refinery.services, you can see the tool I will send the link here. And additionally, I prepared the, the demo. So I can send this link. If you click on that link, the second link, you can you can see the, the demo I'm uh, for this uh, tutorial. And I will zoom in a bit and maybe make it uh, light. So what we have here, we have an editor and we have a graph view, an interactive graph view of the partial model. So if I add new uh, facts to the partial modeling language, for example, I want to say that the root of file system is a project, it will automatically update it, update the view. This is the view of the partial model. Uh, here we can specify the, the problem and we, when we push the generate button, it sends the problem to the server and, and solves the partial modeling problem with, uh, with a, a concrete graph we can use for, for any purposes. Uh, of course, here the, the partial model uh, needs to be extended by by further constraints. So for example, here there is a, a, a self-target. We can add new constraints to, to avoid this kind of problems. So for example, just add an error predicate. The symbolic link has a self loop defined as a target. We have this prologue like language to specify problems. And if we push generate, it will generate all models where self loops are, uh, uh, are not present anymore. So this constraint language is a, it's a first order logic language so we can uh, formalize uh, more and more complex problems. And if you want to see larger problems, for example, 100 files, it should, should work as well. Uh, so I'll just go back to the presentation for some uh, final thoughts. Here is the uh, very brief overview of the of the framework. We have a, an access based editor and uh, and a, uh, an application, a graph generation application on the server, and we can generate the uh, the graphs. For the diagramming, we are using DOT, uh, which is translated to JavaScript, and this is uh, this. Visualization is uh, executed on the user side. So if I write larger graph here and generate larger graphs, the, the browser will be slower and not the server, as you can see. So just uh, and the long running graph generation problem, because this is a difficult problem, this is the logic solving problem, is running on the server. And we have a lot of interesting algorithms in the background, which can, uh, which can be used for graph generation, logic reasoning, 
and, and design space exploration problems. And we are using uh, advanced uh, reasoning uh, tools to solve those logic problems with graph-based technologies. Interfaces shown, and there are some papers if you are interested in the background algorithms. And thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, please, please ask. <laughs>